A Raspberry Pi tablet sounds like a great idea. Let's see if it holds up. Hi guys, I'm Matt and today we're talking about Raspberry 3. 2021 has been a great year for Raspberry Pi for owners, starting with Crow Pi 2, which turned that favorite board of yours into a STEM-oriented laptop. You can watch the review in here. Or maybe a Desk Pi Pro, which basically takes the same Raspberry Pi 4 and turns it into a small enclosed Raspberry Pi based computer. And now we have a Raspad 3.0, which takes that favorite board, Raspberry Pi 4, and turns it into a very peculiar tablet. I had the pleasure actually to open it up on the live stream if you want to see my first impression. There is a video in the corner for you. But today we're going to talk about the Raspad 3 in detail and I'll tell you my long time thoughts on the device itself. Adding a screen or touch display to a Raspberry Pi, it's not a new idea. However, turning it into a fully fledged tablet, it hasn't been achieved by many companies. Now, Raspberry 3 is an iteration of the device and uh, this one supports Raspberry Pi 4. So it did what any reasonable person would, grab the strongest Raspberry Pi, the 8 gig version, and plugged it inside. Packed with the best hardware possible, I'm ready to pass my judgment and let's start with the form factor. As you can see, the device is much bigger than your typical tablet, but there are some advantages to that. Unlike tablet devices, this can be straight up placed into a vertical position, allowing to be used as a smart display, something that you can't really do with a tablet without a stand. And even if you use the stand, they're often quite wobbly. And with this one, you can poke it all you want and it stays in place. Additional advantage to having a wedge shape is the fact that the screen is constantly tinted, tilted towards you, which means the actual use of it when it's laying flat on the desk, it's quite pleasant. This is obviously to accommodate the fully featured Raspberry Pi 4 board uh, inside. So you don't use a CM4 board or anything stripped down. You can just plunk it, a Raspberry Pi 4 inside and start using it. There are some disadvantages though. You only get three USB a ports. Those however are USB 3.0 ports so you will be able to use them at its full speed. However they are connected to a single USB uh, port inside through the hub. Another thing that kind of got me confused is the DC power. Now the Raspberry or well, Raspad is using 15 volt power supply with a DC jack. Now it converts all of that inside into USB Type-C which makes me think why don't you simply use the USB Type-C since it actually has 15 volts delivery power in a USB uh, Type-C power delivery standard? Something that probably everyone would appreciate because you could use another charger. It's nice to see, however, a HDMI port so you can connect additional display and obviously the headphone jack if you don't want to use the internal speakers. And on the other side, you have dedicated power button, brightness, volume buttons and SD card slot. While this has a wedge form factor and meant to be used as a tablet, it still has an access to GPIO at the back. Uh, you will have to use a ribbon cable to drive them out. Uh, my suggestion here is that you, if you do that, you won't be able to use it in this position, the horizontal position, because the actual slot is at the bottom. I wish there was additional one. And lastly, there is also a slot for the camera. So if you want to connect the camera, you'll be able to do it. Uh, Aldo, Considering the size of the bezels, I was surprised not to see a camera featured on this by standard. So let's talk about the main feature, which is a touchscreen display. Now this is not 1080p display, which I initially thought it was, but this is a good evidence how good the display actually is. It is ISP panel uh, 1280 by 800 and for the device this size, this is 10.1 inch display, it's perfectly adequate. The screen is quite bright and thanks to it being ISP panel, it beats a lot of budget tablets in terms of uh, the screen performance. The touch interface is on par with the display quality and it's quite responsive and easy to use. But not everything is perfect and Raspberry Pi is never meant to be tablets and some level of hacking is required to get it off the ground. First, you'll have to solder in an accelerometer unit. 
a really weird choice considering there is a fully featured um, I would call it motherboard inside that is responsible for uh, hosting USB, delivering power and etc. However, the accelerometer is out as an additional model uh, attached to the GPIO. It's a bit bizarre choice. Now, for the most part, it works great. However, it is crucial if you want to use it for screen orientation and for onboard keyboard. Now, one of the biggest gripes I have with this setup is that Raspad doesn't provide you a dedicated Raspbian OS or modified Raspbian OS to actually have all those fixes. You'll be asked to install the screen rotation yourself. You'll be asked to uh, install the um, on-screen keyboard as well. And also, lastly, you'll be asked to install a pretty much a hack to enable uh, right-click display. Why it is annoying to do, you only have to do it once and it is all available on the Raspad page. So what is it like in use? Well, it is a Raspberry Pi 4 essentially, so for the most part you'll be using it as a Raspberry Pi 4. With the same speeds and the same performance, so I'm not going to be really talking about that. It has an active fan for cooling inside, but the fan is quite quiet and actually the user experience is pretty decent. There are a couple of quirks that I did not like. First of all, the onboard keyboard. I realize this is not really a Raspad itself problem, more like an onboard keyboard problem, but that software keyboard is, well, spotty at best. Now, it won't work without accelerometer, it won't simply pop out for no reason. Uh, however, what's worse is that it only pops out in some uh, in input interfaces. I was able to get the keyboard out when I'm typing a web address, however, I'm not able to get the keyboard out when I'm trying to change the directory by typing it. Another problem is the battery. Considering the size of the device, I would expect a little bit greater battery. Now, the battery is going to last you about three hours, depending on your workload, which, let's face it, is slightly disappointing. And while on the subject of power, I already mentioned the lack of USB Type-C, but what I should also mention that once the screen is powered off, the associated hub gets powered off, which means no devices will function with the screen powered off. Something that I really struggled to troubleshoot when I was connecting uh, my 3D printers to this device, because I've actually used it as a terminal running Octoprint to support multiple printers. And I think this is where the device shines, because I was able to set it up as a controller for multiple printers running multiple instances of Octoprint, and that way, with web interfaces displayed in a full screen, I could really imagine a device like that being used as a till or a smart display for your home automation. Raspad 3.0 has advantages. It brings a really nice display and touch interface to Raspberry Pi 4, and they ask for around $220 on the shop. Now, whether you can justify the price, it's down to you, but you can't deny that the screen on this device is quite nice. And if you're looking for solu similar solutions, you'll find yourself struggling for choice. Now, if you're interested in the device itself, you will find the link in the description of this video. So if you're tempted and you're willing to overcome the problems I've listed in this video, go ahead, knock yourself out and get one for yourself. Especially that I will be probably using this to direct my printers because it's actually quite awesome for that. But you know what's next? Well, you don't, I know. I do not have a posting schedule, so if you want to find out what's next, you know how YouTube works? I'm not going to explain you that, but I have a couple of social media that you probably want to follow, especially that YouTube tends to filter out a lot of comments, uh, especially those with links. So do let me know because I can't retrieve them. And if you have anything to send it to me, use the social media, get the conversation going and keep in touch. As for now guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.